Hi everyone. Here I am, back in a hurry. We have a lot going on this week. We're putting a lot of different things out because I didn't want to miss the holiday and so we just had to fit this in. So here it is, my second half of Halloween's Halloween. I really don't like the music. I don't mean that I don't simply have a liking for it, but I have a strong dislike. In fact, at this point, I hate the piece. I don't ever want to hear it again. Probably if I were shopping in one of those stores right now that's always playing canned music and this came on, I think I'd just leave my cart in the aisle and walk out. That is how I feel about it at this point. And I'm not the type of person to settle into an opinion in a hurry. I know enough to understand that first impressions are not always right and some things are an acquired taste. Some things take time to grow into. But this song, each time I listened to it these past few days, I hated it more and more. But that's just me. I don't mean to say that you shouldn't like it, or that if you like it, you are a horrible person. No, not at all. We need to constantly keep in mind that when it comes to any form of art, personal tastes are, you could almost say, sacred. One piece of music can be perfectly relevant to you for the experience that you are in, while it is entirely irrelevant to me. For example, I love brass instruments. Vlad hates them. But we both love classical music and brass features in classical music. So here I am, I hate Halloween by Halloween. You might love it and that's perfectly fine. Of course, I'm the one that chose to get myself into this. I wanted to do something in reference to the holiday, and this seemed like a perfectly titled piece. So I've stuck it out, and I'll share with you what I have noticed about the music. And hopefully there'll be something interesting for those of you who do love it. And for those of you who join me in my dislike, maybe you'll discover some of the reasons why. So let's dive in. First of all, if it had even the tiniest bit of discernible humor, I'd call this a parody of the American version of the holiday. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe, since this is a German band, maybe I'm not picking up on the German humor? Anyway, I don't want to make everything over into an American interpretation. But I really do think that this song belongs to the American holiday style and I'm not being entirely complimentary towards American culture when I say that. But I can get away with the insult because I'm American myself. You see, Halloween is one of those holidays that is interpreted in vastly different ways in different parts of the world. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm married to an Eastern European, a Romanian. And he has described to me the way that Halloween is observed in that part of the world. He told me that, for example, in Transylvania, there it's a day of remembrance and prayers for the dead, and people take candles out to the cemeteries and set them at the graves. If you know where to look after dark, you can see whole forests of candles flickering through the night in the cemeteries. But here in modern America, it's a play, a means of entertainment primarily, especially focused towards the younger people kids, teenagers, and in addition, it has become increasingly more commercial and consumerist in its celebration style. Here, people decorate their homes and yards with silly cardboard ghosts and fake spider webs and skeletons and plastic jack-o'-lanterns. And then on the night of Halloween, Kids get dressed up in all their wacky costumes as they've just been waiting to put on and go trick-or-treating. Vlad didn't have a clue what it meant to trick-or-treat. So if you don't understand or know what that is, it's okay. I'll explain briefly. Basically, kids or whoever goes door to door in the neighborhood. They knock and when the door is opened, you say trick-or-treat and hold out your little sack. And if the people of the house are friendly and playing along, they will put some treat in your bag, usually cheap candy. And then 
you go on to the next house. But if they don't give you anything, then it's up to you to play a trick on them. One of the common ones is to throw toilet paper all through the trees or bushes in their yard. And then, poor people, they have an ugly mess. It's very difficult to clean up, especially if it gets rained on and turns into a soggy mess. So there you go. There's absolutely nothing reflective or serious about it. It's simply a day to dress up as crazy or as silly as you want and go collect lots of candy. Of course, there are also people who believe that it's an evil holiday linked to occult and devilish practices and won't have anything to do with it. But anyway, I think this song conveys the shallow, artificial, non-serious, even commercial attitude that is so prevalent in this country around holidays. The music and even the lyrics come across to me as being insincere, cliche, even childish, though certainly not childlike. Maybe that's the point of the song? I think it's very well suited to the modern American interpretation of the holiday. But how does it do that musically? Why does it come across that way? Well, as we know, music has this incredible ability to express both ideas and emotions. Some combinations of musical sounds easily express certain emotions, feelings, moods, or even pictures. For example, you might call this one happy. Maybe a bit carefree. Or maybe this could be described as melancholy. with our sound. Like, let's say, a fountain bubbling up and springing into flowing water. That works great on the harp. about music theory and composition techniques, even if you're a total beginner, join my membership community on Coffee, where I am presenting a music theory course which is designed to take total beginners all the way to the point where they can write and arrange their own music, understand all music better, and even unlock some of the classical music works. But back to the examples which I just gave. In each one of them, the various notes interact and combine for widely different emotive outcomes. It has a lot to do with both pitch and rhythm, but there's another element which we have to take into account too, and that is the timbre, the tonal quality or color. Back to the Halloween song. The way they use the instruments and the voice results in music which is thin, reedy, even ugly strained, colorless. You could even say it's emotionless. Pay attention to the voice next time you listen and notice how it has no depth or color to its sound quality. 
it's a bit like a plastic ghost. And in my opinion, it's quite suitable because that is exactly what this holiday is like, at least here in America. I mean, they don't even give you a day off from work, like at Christmas or on New Year's Eve. It's basically just a holiday for kids. I called it emotionless a moment ago. But you can find a kind of surface excitement, some little shivers of fear, a hint of scariness, and at the same time, some eagerness to get a little close to danger. Just like the kids when they go out after dark to trick or treat. So the music is doing, I would say, a perfect job describing this type of holiday. It is meant to be so, just like all the other songs that have been written for different specific holidays. For example, see if you can figure out which holiday this song is associated with. of course. Sweet, um, happy, joyful, childlike. Nearly every holiday with a long tradition has music which brings to mind that season, whether it's Hanukkah, Easter, Ramadan, and that is what I find in this Halloween song. It is not only describing a holiday, but the music itself drives us towards that type of atmosphere. Altogether, I stick with my first impression, that it sounds like a teenage Halloween outing. Not too serious, neither perfectly innocent. It lies somewhere between. They're out looking for fun, maybe a bit of trouble, but not going deep into a cult or the religious traditions of the day. In fact, they want to avoid getting it too deep. It's just supposed to be enough of play to make them all feel like they've got some grown-up experience and sniffed out danger a bit. Probably, they're the group of kids who made a mess of your yard by strewing it all over with toilet paper, because they didn't get the kind of candy they wanted from you. In closing, I would like to remind you that this is my personal feeling towards the song, and not a judgment on anyone else who does feel a connection to it. It's true. I didn't find anything particularly mentionable about the music design or structure itself. But it's not a disorganized pile of noise. It does have shape and organization, even to the point that there are no big surprises in it. Perhaps that is the very reason you like it. Or maybe you find something deep and fulfilling in it because of your own particular experiences which shape how you perceive it. So, let me say, Happy Halloween to you, go enjoy the fun, dress up, throw your whole heart into it, play, have good wholesome fun with the kids, play a prank if you want, but don't hurt anyone and stay safe. Tomorrow is the last day of this month and the poll in the community tab will close. I guess we know by now that the winner this month is Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, one of the songs which has been suggested to me so many times in the life of this channel. And not only you, but Vlad as well, can hardly wait to have me sit down and do this first listen. He says there's nothing like this song in the history of rock music. And of course, that makes me curious, especially since I have already learned quite a bit about Queen and Brian May after my first listen of Love of My Life. But in two days time, we will open the poll for December. Don't miss it. Keep your eyes open and participate as soon as it comes up. Also, if you want to receive notifications when I post new content, click the little bell next to the subscribe button and click this link to watch my first listen of Halloween by Halloween if you haven't seen it yet. 
I'll see you soon.